the speed of sound with Kyle Meredith. As the song goes, some days are better than others. Some days, all of the hard work that you've put in over the years pays off. Some days, you cash in your lottery ticket for the grand prize you've been dreaming about. And on that day, you could find yourself sitting across from The Edge and Adam Clayton, one half of U2, backstage in Chicago's United Center during their Innocence and Experience tour, mere hours after you stood next to Bono and sang the miracle of Joey Ramone during soundcheck. Or at least, that was my day. Yes, some days are better than others. I was chasing down the days of fear, chasing down a dream before it disappeared. I am here on, uh, I guess, the front lines of rock and roll with The Edge and Adam from U2. But if this is the front line, we're pretty comfortable, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. That, it's not true, though. It, it seems throughout you guys' entire career, no matter how good the record is or what's going on, you've always had to defend yourself. It, it must be exhausting to be in U2. Uh, I, guess, I guess it means we must be irritating someone somewhere, and that maybe that's a good thing. It's good to be an irritant. <laughs> um, yeah, the worst thing to be is unobjectionable. Yeah, it's unnoticed. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's just part of what we seem to generate in, 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 our, in the audiences. I sort of either an extreme response in a positive or negative direction. Thankfully, there's still a lot of people who really love what we do. But um, even if from the very beginning, there were always people who just couldn't take it, weren't, weren't open to it. Because our music's very upfront. It's, it's, not a, uh, it's not a detached music. It's passionate. It's kind of in your face. And if you're open to it and you want to accept it, then I think it's it's you know it's an amazing thing, but some people are just not ready for that. <laughs> My attitude is, if you don't like you two, you're just not trying hard. <laughs> you guys have made it pretty easy for a lot of people to to like. I mean, there's been so many different sounds through the years anyway. Uh, w with this new record, with Songs of Innocence, I know a lot of the theme is about is kind of about looking back or, or celebrating your youth or whatever you want to say on that. And when you're doing that, and, I, and, and maybe it's more lyrical and, you know, with, with what Bono's doing up there or, or not, but it, it seems like a group thing anyway. Do you find that there's any kind of closure that when you have to relive your, your teenage years over and over and over every night on a tour like that, suddenly, it, 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 to me, it would seem like there was this point where you get to kind of close that door eventually. I think the songs take on a different meaning uh, the longer you live with them. It's funny how a song like I Will Follow mm -hmm. started out as a quite an abstract lyric. No one really knew quite where it had come from or what it was about. And looking back now, you can see exactly, you know, it was, that was the moment Bono lost his mother and, and became, as he's now saying during the show, became an artist. Certainly, it was probably the spur that gave him the, the, the ambition he has and the, the sense of having to use music as a way to kind of make sense of the world and define himself. And that song kind of grew in, in depth and our understanding of it over the years. And I think this album is no different. There's a lot of songs that are very personal. But there's nuances and lyrics that we're still kind of figuring out. And the songs really are taking on a life of their own lives. The show is very weighted towards the new songs, but they're standing alongside our best work. I'm so glad the past is all gone. I think in some ways being in U2 is, is like having a living diary because every time you look at those earlier songs you are reminded exactly of what your experience was and what you were thinking at the time and, and, and what you were doing almost and now when you go back to those songs and you play those songs with a different perspective it's like ah okay now I know why I'm here right. now I know what it's all about 
And in some ways, we're playing those songs better now than when we first wrote them. Musically, when, you know, if you're going into the album thinking that this may be what we're going to be doing thematically or whatever, I, you know, I look at a song like Every Breaking Wave that kind of harkens back to older sounds of U2 that has a little bit of that Joshua Tree in there or, or something like that, you know, and, and you know, and, and I know it doesn't have to be like that because there's the acoustic version of it that sounds nothing like that whatsoever. Do you, do you, is that all part of it? Do you say, let's, let's do those fun little tricks? Let's, let's pull in those little, you know? I think we actually quite mostly do the opposite. We try and avoid direct references, but it is the same for guys and, you know, the music that turned us on and, and was so formative for us um, means that we're always going to, we're always going to move in, in a particular direction in songwriting and production. Mm -hmm. We like to try and keep things as fresh as possible. So if, it, if things start to sound like previous albums, it's almost against the grain of what we're trying to yeah. achieve, mostly. Well, it seems like it'd be so hard. I mean, you're known for innovation, you know, uh, by the technology, by the style of music. I had an argument with a friend, not really an argument, but, but I said, uh, you know, we're talking about U2 as possibly, arguably, the greatest band of all time, in the sense that if you know, were going to put it up against another band, it's got to be the Beatles, who changed the world twice with their first record and with Sgt. Pepper. To have that on your shoulders, to constantly try to innovate forward musically. And there are so many new sounds on here. The song you do with Licky Lee. And, you know, how, how do you do it? How, how do you go into that going, all right, we've got to come up with something new. We've got to be you too. First of all, I mean, to compare to the Beatles is, is an unbelievable idea. And I, I, don't, I, I don't think anyone could ever be a, a, a comparable band to the Beatles. They, they just, for me, they stand in a different sort of universe to any, anything else. But to even be in the same sentence is, is, is like uh, just amazing to me. But in terms of the, the drive within our group, we always sort of seek out things that feel new and fresh. And it's almost, it's almost the only time we really start to get very excited in the studio or, or alive is when we feel like we're dealing with something that's that's really unique and different and that's just we've had that from the very beginning i suppose because we came through in that era of punk music where everything was being reinvented we we've never relied on um, a knowledge of traditional forms within rock and roll we've actually made it our business to try and avoid them most of the time, at all costs. You know, the few exceptions, like on the Joshua Tree, we definitely were sort of playing around with some blues ideas and that one come. But it, it's, you know, most of our work is dedicated to finding a new point of view that hasn't been explored before. And that's, that goes through into our live productions and a lot of other things that we do. Yeah, it, it, it just seems like, you know, with the idea that there are only so many notes, it more becomes about what new sound can we put on those notes, you know, and it's, it's just mind-blowing that you would have to, 30 some odd years in, you're still going, no, 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 we can still do this different. This can be done different. I think, you know, we're very lucky because we, we, we can get excited by the potential of those yeah. notes, yeah. you know, and somehow we think we can find another note in there amongst all of them. <laughs> and it, I, do, I think we can. That's yeah. the, I really genuinely yeah. think we can yeah. because rock and roll as a form is pretty simple. You know, when I listen back to our early record, Boy album particularly, mm -hmm. I'm hearing these nuances in the composition. I go, where did that come from? That's so out of the box of rock and roll. It's really not. I, I can't think of a reference for it. And that, I remember at the time, a lot of it was 
we would just be in the room trying out some ideas and I mean the thing is we we knew so little about music composition that we would try mm -hmm. a lot of experiments and it was through that playfulness trial and error and just that we would hit on these new compositional ideas that that were coming from some completely different world and yet they, they sit on that album quite quite easily um, I think it was that moment it was just that moment where music was really everything was up for grabs it, it was the rule book was had been torn up so it was like just see what you can do with all that's been said about uh, Songs of Innocence, uh, reviews, great, bad, all of it. Do you find now that that's directing or, or even redirecting how you're looking at Songs of Experience as, as you go into that? Like now that you've had time to put that in the world and said this is what we're doing? I, I don't th think so. I mean, I, I think we're very happy with what this record is and, and what these songs are. And then the Songs of Experience will obviously be from a different perspective. I, I think we're trying to make it a little rawer uh, as a, a sound, you know, the production is a little rawer, but, you know, until it's done, it's really hard to comment on.